Okay, this is going to be the uh, second part of my double integral in polar coordinates where I actually um, integrate this function. So um, the first part, we actually set up uh, the integral and I had it at the bottom. I've moved it back up to the top here. So we're integrating from 0 to pi and then 0 to 2 sine theta, 12r minus 6r squared times cosine theta minus 4r squared sine theta with respect to r and with respect to theta. So just pretty tedious from here, um, so hopefully I'll be careful with my arithmetic. So okay, we're integrating with respect to r in the first part, so we'll get 12r squared over 2, or 6r squared. Um, we would get 6r cubed over 3, or 2r cubed, and remember cosine theta we're treating just like a constant because we're integrating with respect to r. And then it looks like we would get minus 4 thirds r cubed times sine theta. Okay, so now we have to evaluate this from r equals 0 to r equals 2 sine theta. And then we have to integrate all of that with respect to theta. Okay, so hopefully I won't make any crazy um, algebra mistakes here. So from 0 to pi. Okay, so we'll get 6 times 2 sine theta quantity squared minus 2 times, and then we'll have 2 sine theta quantity cubed times cosine theta. And then we'll have a minus 4 thirds 2 sine theta cubed. Um, and then I still have my original sine theta. Okay, so that's just the upper limit of integration there that we've calculated. Okay, and then we would have to plug in, um, just checking things here, making sure I didn't do anything crazy. Um, and then we'd have to subtract away our lower limit of integration. But the good thing it looks like about the lower limit of integration is we're plugging in zeros for r, so we would get 6 times 0, minus 2 times 0, minus 4 thirds times 0, who cares about cosine and sine, they're all 0. So at least the lower limit of integration is going to go away in this case. Alright, so again, maybe let's just clean this up here a little bit. Um, so this is from 0 to pi. Okay, so 2 squared is going to be 4 times 6 is going to be 24 sine squared theta. Um, so I'm going to have 2 cubed, which is 8, times a, uh, another 2 is going to be minus 16 sine cubed theta times cosine theta. And then I'm going to have 2 cubed, um, which is 8. 8 and 4 is 32 over 3. So minus 32 over 3. It looks like we have sine cubed times another sine, so that'll give us sine to the fourth theta d theta. Okay, so there's not a lot to combine here in this case. Oh, this is going to be a long one. <laughs> um, so what we have to do in this case, remember for sine squared, the identity that you can use, um, we can write sine squared theta equals 1 half times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. That's what we're going to have to use here on the first piece. And then I'm actually going to have to break up the sine to the fourth theta as sine squared theta squared, so it's still to the fourth power, and then I'm going to plug it into that part as well. So I don't think there's going to be any way I'm going to be able to do this one in one video, so let's see, uh, let's see how far we can get through here in a couple minutes. So it says we would get 0 to pi, um, and yes, of course, you could plug this into a calculator or whatever you want to, so um, if this no longer interests you, feel free to, to flip it off. Um, so yeah, just very tedious. So, okay, so I'm replacing the sine squared with the 1 half, 1 minus cosine 2 theta in the first part, um, d theta. The next integral I would integrate individually, so 0 to pi, um, and we would have 16 sine cubed theta times cosine theta, d theta, and I'm going to run out of room, so let me tag on my last integral, so then I would be subtracting the integral from 0 to pi of 32 over 3, um, so again I'm going to plug in 1 half, 1 minus cosine of 2 theta, squared, 
and all of that is being squared with respect to theta. Yuck. Okay, so let's again try to maybe simplify some of this stuff down and see what we get. Um, you know, again, it's tedious, but I really feel like this is, um, you know, this is good practice for a lot of people because on a test these problems are long and you got to move so quickly. Um, it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, so zero to pi. So the first part I'll get 24 uh, divided by two, which is just going to give us 12, and I'm actually going to factor that out front. Okay, so I'm going to pull the 12 out front, and then I would have 1 minus cosine of 2 theta left over, um, d theta. And then we would have to subtract away the integral from 0 to pi of 16. Um, we've got our sine cubed theta, cosine theta, d theta. Oops, I left out my theta. Cosine theta, d theta. And then the last part, okay, so everything's getting squared here. So my one half would get squared and turn into a one fourth. Okay, so we would get a one fourth. 32 over 4 is 8, so it looks like we would get minus um, 8 thirds, the integral from 0 to pi. If I foil out the 1 minus cosine 2 theta, if I square it, I'm going to get 1 minus 2 cosine 2 theta. Um, plus it looks like a cosine squared 2 theta d theta term. Alright, so this is going to take forever and ever. I'm going to integrate these a piece at a time now. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do just to try to calculate these. Okay, so the first part first, let's integrate, let's actually calculate a value for this first integral. So it says when we integrate from 0 to pi, we get 1 minus cosine 2 theta, d theta. So when I integrate that, I'm going to get theta uh, minus sine of 2 theta divided by 2. So you can integrate cosine 2 theta by doing a u substitution. We'll plug in theta equals 0 and theta equals pi. So when I plug in pi, I'm going to get pi minus sine of 2 pi over 2. That's going to be my upper limit of integration. Minus the lower limit. Well, if I plug in 0, I'll get 0 minus sine of 0 over 2. Well, the good thing is sine of 2 pi is going to give us 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So the only thing we're left with from the first integral is pi. But again, don't forget that we're multiplying that by 12. So really, this whole first integral is going to work out to be the number 12 times pi. Okay, so we'll get 12 pi for the first part. Now let's integrate the second integral. So if we integrate um, 16 from 0 to pi, the sine cubed theta cosine theta d theta part. Okay, what we would have to do on that part is I would let u equal sine theta, du then would equal cosine theta d theta. So we'll get, this will turn into the integral 16. If we figure out our new limits of integration, so if I plug in u equals, if we plug in theta equals 0, we'll get sine of 0, which is 0. Um, if we plug in pi, we also get that sine of pi is going to be 0. So hey, this is kind of cute. Um, and then we'll have u cubed du left over. Well, if you ever integrate an, an integral from some number to the same number, that integral just works out to be 0. Okay, so it looks like the middle integral is going to be 0 in this case. Um, Somehow I feel like I don't believe it, but there it is. Okay, so we'll get zero on the second part. So minus zero. <clears throat> and now the last thing we have to do is, so we basically are just left with 12 pi minus this stuff. So we'll have to calculate this integral as well. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one last video and finish off this integral because I don't want to run out of time.